All right. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of Veg Networking, where vegan plant-based entrepreneurs are connecting and collaborating to create an impact. Our special guest today is a, da a doctor of naturopathic medicine. Uh, it all started for him in Qualicum Beach on Vancouver Island, where as a youngster, he battled with asthma, allergies, and weight management. Into his adulthood, he received his Bachelor's of Science in Microbiology at the University of Victoria, subsequently graduating from the Boucher Institute, holding additional board certifications in intravenous therapies, prescriptive authority, and acupuncture. He continues to help his clients through his plant-based nutrition certificate from eCornell. And some other notable items about our special guest in Rapid Fire is he does some work and major support with nutritionfacts.org. He supports animal sanctuaries and animal activism. He is a skilled footballer. For some of you, you might be thinking, yes, soccer. He is a rock and roll concert buddy with his father. He is a skateboarder, surfer, and flyboarder. Ladies and gentlemen, help, me wel help us welcome Dr. Matthew Negra. Thank you. It's actually funny that you mentioned uh, the skateboarding. That's been a very, very, very long time <laughs> for that stuff. But uh, yeah, it brings back the memories for sure. Yeah. So, you know, speaking of skateboarding being a long time ago, uh, I understand, we understand that um, skateboarding accident was a, was a knee injury for you. And so you uh, ankle actually. Oh, okay. So an ankle injury, um, which kind of dovetails into our, into our story. Maybe that's in there um, is the first question is what is your plant-based vegan origin story? And when did that start? Yeah. When I was, um, I mean, when I was younger, you already mentioned some of the health uh, issues I had. Um, I had a personal trainer. I, I played a lot of sports um, as a kid. I had a personal trainer who was training me for football, actually. And, um, and I never really took his advice too seriously when it came to nutrition, but he did promote more plant-based eating, not maybe 100%, but 90 95%. Um, and it wasn't until he made me do a food diary, so record everything I was eating um, for about two weeks, actually. And uh, I knew that my diet wasn't quite up to snuff and, and wasn't, actually, it was far from that, far from what uh, he wanted to see. And so I thought, okay, for these next couple of weeks, I'll just change my diet essentially I'll, I'll eat super clean i got rid of the dairy i got rid of um all the classic junk foods your pop soda that kind of stuff um and i started losing weight uh, within a couple of weeks there i uh, my skin cleared up my asthma got better I, I noticed all these improvements and at that point i thought okay maybe he's on to something now the funny thing was dairy was one of the first things i gave up and it was a week later or maybe two weeks later that i broke my leg from skateboarding um, and so everyone thought, all my friends are bashing me because, you know, you gave up dairy, then this happens as if, it, you know, it had an impact. Um, but anyways, over, uh, you know, that summer and and, and uh, the following couple of years, I just, I felt way better than I had previously. And I kept learning more and more about plant-based eating and experimenting in different ways. Um, and then I went to university, at which point my uh, my health maybe slid a little bit the other way. I was drinking on the weekends. I was eating um, cafeteria food. I was back to eating more meat and animal products. I still was um, dairy free. I kept that uh, out. Um, and uh, I just, I realized I was feeling more tired and, and sick and, and that than I was uh, previously. So I decided in my second um, semester, one day when I was just feeling particularly run down that I would go all in 100% um, made the switch overnight and it's been, it'll be 10 years in a couple of months here. Wow. So you, you have a lot of experience of going through things yourself that I'm sure, you know, we'll get to in talking about your practice, but you, you have quite a, an ability to understand what some of your clients might be coming to you mm -hmm. with, right? Like, you know, the guilt of slipping up or an injury or all these different things about how you can help your clients. And it's mm -hmm. fabulous. Um, I guess the second, the second half of that first part of the question is, Throughout your, your origin story of becoming plant-based, was there a time where more of the, the, the vegan aspect of it came in and, and led you to what you do do with sanctuaries and um, your animal activism and, and that side of it? That came after I'd gone 100%. So the initial change was health-driven. Uh, and then within a couple years of going 100% uh, plant-based was when I actually watched Earthlings. That was the, the thing I finally watched. The same personal trainer actually recommended it to me, funny enough. So he, he really drove a lot of those, um, a lot of those changes. 
And so I watched it at that point and that even after seeing it, surprisingly, I wasn't a hundred percent, like I, I wasn't a hundred percent focused on, on ethics and that yet. I thought it was like, wow, this is crazy what we do to them and that we need to uh, consider it. But it wasn't until I really started actually attending some more activism events and, and uh, speaking with other people and, and being more, I think it helps to have that kind of surrounding, have those people around you to reinforce these, these ideologies and these things that are um, happening. Because, you know, you see it, it has a big impact and then you forget about it. Um, so it wasn't until I got more involved in the community that I really started becoming passionate about the, the animal rights side. Well, all of us give you a big thank you for doing so because uh, it, it matters. Um, now, I'd be remiss if I didn't say, is there a shout out you want to give to this personal trainer? Oh, Gray Beal. Yeah, he's uh, um, him and his wife, Juanita Beal. Actually, she um, ran three Ironmans in three days while being 100% plant-based too. Like she's crazy, um, a super good athlete. But uh, so Gray Beal, Juanita Beal, they, they have a, um, a personal training uh, gym, actually. It's, it's all dedicated to personal training in Qualicum or just outside Qualicum Beach. Beautiful, beautiful. Vancouver Island. Love it. Okay, so the second question is, what's your entrepreneurial origin story? And all of us know, right? Like we can, like you, uh, I think you're the only doctor on the call and that requires a lot of education and we can get stuck in that education and then not do anything with it. So what was the spark for you to start building yourself out as an entrepreneur? See, as, as someone who's um, in healthcare, my focus was always on health. Like it was always on, you know, patient health and that. And I wasn't, I didn't have that huge focus on, on the business side, but I grew up with, with uh, business owners. My parents own multiple uh, um, furniture and, and mattress stores. So I've, I've been exposed to it a lot. It, it was something that came more, I guess, natural to me or, or something that I just had experience with. I still don't focus on it. I, I'm not thinking when I'm deciding if I'm going to implement a certain treatment and, and start promoting it or whatever. I'm not thinking about, oh, is this going to make me money? I'm thinking, is it going to help my patients? But then on the more global scale to think about how do I bring patients in, I guess that's where more of the entrepreneurship comes from. And I, I started with just social media, really. Uh, I, I started with social media once I was just out of school. I wasn't even practicing yet. I started on it pretty quick. I, I started making posts about things that I thought were interesting, that I thought were, um, were um, uh, informational thing that, that people can learn from, but then would also promote myself, right, to, to put my name out there. And Funny enough, I didn't think it would take off the way that it did, but I found something that I enjoyed doing, that I was good at, and people seemed to really like it. I had some really big names start to share uh, some of my posts, and then people start reaching out and asking, um, you know, are you accepting patients? How, how can I see you? I, actually, I still get, I get questions from like Russia and stuff sometimes. Like people want me to do telemedicine across the world, which is funny. Um, but it was, it was something that just kind of happened. I don't really know. Like I, I'm almost the wrong person to really ask that question for. I just, I did something that I thought was really going to help people and that people would be interested in. And I just happened to, I guess, benefit from it. Um, it wasn't, it wasn't like I set out to, to think, okay, how do I make my name you know, widespread and, and as, as, uh, um, as popular as possible, if you want to say that. Matthew, I think all of us are, are nodding our heads because I think you're the perfect person to ask because that lens of, of leading with value and doing it and making and understanding that progress is better than perfection and just doing it and seeing what it's led to might be actually the perfect person to ask. So um, thank you so much for that. Um, is there, it's probably safe to say that your physical brick and mortar clinic is not in operation right now and then therefore your oh, practice is. oh it is yeah yeah okay um, excellent we did shut down for for a couple months um at which point i had to move online and started doing online telemedicine but we are taking patients in person now however we have a whole bunch of protocols in place we screen them ahead of time they get their temperature taken they have to wear masks there's all sorts of of extra um, protocols that we have in place yeah excellent okay um now i you've already hit on it, which is uh, the virtual space in your industry. Um, and I think I've heard you mention climate change as a trend before as well, but 
maybe specific to your industry and, and the, the whole plant-based entrepreneur scene, what are some trends that you're noticing, if any? <laughs> I, I notice all of the opposite uh, trends of, of what plant-based nutrition would be focused on. I, I see all that. Whenever something new, flashy comes out, when even things like the carnivore diet come out, people get interested in it all of a sudden. I see that in the health space so much. So if anything, I'm combating a lot of these trends that come out and I try, try my best to clear up the confusion around them. Um, uh, there's also obviously trends that always happen with uh, new innovative therapies and some of them can be great, but a lot of the time um, it's based on preliminary data, right? You have, you have some small scale trials that show some benefit for people and that's great, but we don't wanna be injecting people with something without having more large scale um, uh, research uh, you know, not just a small trial on, on say 20 people or something. So I, um, I see these trends happen whenever something in the health field, supplements, diet, whatever comes up, um, uh, whenever something's new and, and exciting, people jump on it, but I actually tend to, to stay away from those. And if anything, try to warn people about uh, getting ahead of themselves. Staying tried and true. Uh, <laughs> outstanding. Um, okay. Well, very curious. I mean, everybody who comes to Veg Networking is interested in, of course, the, the alignment that we all share, right? And how do we actually support and connect and, and, and grow together? So through that lens, where is Matthew or your brand going in the future? Yeah, I, again, I guess with COVID and everything, we've moved online. I, I see that happening. I, I do think uh, there's potential for me to expand into other provinces and stuff and, and do telemedicine that way. But I think where I'd like to see my, um, my overall brand, if, if you want to call it that go is I do want to, while I still want to practice, I definitely want to be seeing patients doing that at least a few days a week. I would love to move into some way of, of educating people. Um, like right now I do it anyway, but I still need to be practicing, right? I don't make money off of the stuff that I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, educating people about, I'd like to do some kind of like uh, either online courses or, um, or something like that where I can inform more people um, with hopefully good information and, uh, but still practice uh, as well as, as a part of uh, what I do. Absolutely. And I, I've said it to people that I've come across before and I'll say it to you because I think it fits. Like you could be crushing it on YouTube or something where you're absolutely right in terms of mass education and scaling your your knowledge and information base i think spot on and uh everybody here and everybody who's listening will will definitely be there to support you in that um now by virtue of you being you know plant-based vegan professional clearly you're already doing so much right to support um with all of that being said are there any sanctuaries or other charitable causes that are very important to you that you find yourself supporting year over year or maybe there were some new charities that you were supporting this year um you already talked about them uh, nutritionfacts.org i've been volunteering with for a couple of years now i think uh i think they're great uh, dr gregor there he he's very dedicated to the cause the the guy is a work horse it's actually crazy the how, how productive he is is uh you know something to strive for that's for sure and um, so, you know, providing just evidence-based nutrition information regularly, I, um, I fully support them. They're doing, I know, uh, or they're taking donations for end of the year right now. I, I volunteer for the site answering questions. I, um, um, I'm always promoting their work. The other one is the Happy Herd Farm Sanctuary where I volunteer at every Sunday. Um, uh, and again, they're just caring for animals who've been rescued from, from all sorts of different uh, industries or homes uh, that have been mistreated. Uh, oftentimes we get very sick animals um, that we have to nurse back to health. And then of course, unfortunately it doesn't always work out that way either. But, um, but uh, those are two of the charities that I've been most involved with personally. So wonderful to hear like you're supporting a, a plant-based or health and then, you know, the animals and the animal welfare. And as a result of your lifestyle, you're supporting the environment. So you Kind of like the holy, the holy trinity, the trifecta there of uh, your support. So, once again, thank you so much for everything that you do because I know everybody here knows of nutritionfacts.org and how how much amazing work that they're doing constantly. Um, all right, so I I personally love this question because you know you never know when you're going to get some golden nugget that you've never heard about, <laughs> right? Um, in terms of books, podcasts, or apps, 
is there anything that is maybe a little obscure that we wouldn't know about that has really helped Dr. Matthew Nagra to where he gets today? Um, let's see, there are, there are ones that I recommend to, to patients and that. I don't know about for myself. I mean, I, uh, for podcasts, I do love Plant Proof and that's hopefully not, hopefully I'm not too clouded by bias now that I've been on it. But uh, prior to that, I loved it as well. Um, and I actually learn a lot more about the environmental side and, and that from that podcast. It's not super often that he focuses on that. He's more so health focused, but he is becoming more and more um, environmentally and, and ethically focused as well. Um, and I actually listen to it for those topics. I don't necessarily listen to it for the health topics as much anymore. Um, so I really love that one. For books, where I've learned a fair amount is probably from Brenda Davis's work. She's a, a dietitian. She's a Canadian dietitian. Um, she wrote the book uh, Becoming Vegan, which is kind of the, the textbook of veganism, if you want to say, from a nutrition standpoint. Um, I think that's really great. And then, uh, oh, apps. Again, it's not something that I necessarily use for myself uh, that much anymore, but but uh, for people looking to, to broaden their, I guess, nutrition or, or to get uh, better in that sense, there's the 21 day vegan kickstart, which is something that I don't think a lot of people know of. It's a 21 day meal plan, um, mostly whole foods, plant-based. It's, it's really simple, it's free. Um, and actually for health professionals, the one that is really great from the same organization is PCRM's Nutrition Guide for Clinicians. It is fantastic. I use that very regularly, actually. That one, um, it lists all sorts of different conditions um, that people often come in with. You click on the condition, it pulls up all of the um, all of the, the background on the condition, how it's diagnosed, how it's conventionally treated, any nutrition interventions that may help, sometimes supplements that may help. It's a really good uh, look, and it's free too, I believe, unless there's a small charge now, but when I got it, it was free. Um, and, uh, and that's a really useful resource for any kind of health professional or anybody who's just really interested in health. Thank you so much. And that's why the, it's lovely that these are recorded because we can go back and, and write down what your suggestions were and look deeper into those on our own. So thank you so much. Um, now, whether these individuals or brands are, you know, your uh, fellow practitioner around the corner or a mega conglomerate corporation across the globe, with that being said, are there any other brands or entrepreneurs that you love to support? Oh, I feel like all of them. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. I, I, all the, the, especially the Vancouver vegan scene. I know there's like To Die For and Aaron Ireland. There's a bunch of, of you right here. Like, uh, I mean, Shauna, where I, was, where I was chatting. Whenever I, I'm in the area, I stop by, we chat. Um, I love supporting uh, their work. It's, there's, there's no... Um, I don't think there's any one really. I, I love just supporting other Vancouver vegan um, um, uh, properties or, or uh, brands that uh, I'm sure you're all aware of at this point. Yeah, thank you so much. And I know that local, uh, keeping the mindset to local right now is, is so, mm -hmm. so important. And so thank you for, for bringing that up. Um, now, the last question uh, is prefaced. Uh, but this, you kind of do this for a living, so it shouldn't it shouldn't be too too tough of a question for you. But what are some advice? What is some advice that you have for others? But a spin on it that what you might not normally get asked is: Do you have any advice on the plant based entrepreneur, more business sense of 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 that? Yeah, um, I think that there is, and actually, I'll, I'll actually go back a little further. So when I was in school. We were always told to, in our professional development classes, we were always told to find our niche, right? That you, as a pro professional myself, as a practitioner, I will see anybody who comes to the door, but to have my niche that I focus on. Um, and I actually, early on, I did like the idea of working with, you know, plant-based populations, specifically with chronic disease and in a specific age bracket and all like I had all of these criteria I had listed out for what my ideal um, ideal uh, clients would be. But I had a huge focus too on, on, um, on physical medicine. I, I love working with athletes, injuries. I've been injured myself. I, I love doing that work. And so I actually tried to, to combine the two and I wanted to focus on plant-based athletes largely. 
now as my name started getting out there and people started work started knowing what I do, I just got flooded with the whole Vancouver plant-based or BC plant-based population. And they, um, and, and, you know, I get so many, um, clients uh, through all of that. And that's become my practice largely. I still work with athletes. I still, um, absolutely, um, uh, love working with athletes and, uh, and vegan athletes even better. But when it, when, uh, when I started getting this, this whole patient population of all these different, you know, that was a lot broader than what I had initially set out for. Um, and not actually exactly what I set out for. It, it wasn't really so much the injuries and that that I was dealing with. It was more so just the nutrition focus. Um, that became my practice and I still love doing it. So if I had to give some kind of advice, I would say it's good to know what kind of niche you're targeting. And believe me, there is space for like a plant-based niche. Like so many people want it nowadays and more and more are going to go there. But it's to be open to maybe maybe you aim for one thing and you, you end up with another thing, you know, it, like just to be open to that kind of change and, and, um, and to various populations, you don't need to, you don't need to shoot for the super, super specific little, little, uh, um, you know, range of people. Fabulous advice. What, what I heard, what we heard, I think from that was yes, of course, have a focus, mm -hmm. But be open to change, and I'm sure we've all seen that graphic before, where we think success is going from one line to here, but it's all these scribbles yeah. in between, and might get the result we wanted, but not, doesn't look or feel the way that we thought it would. But there's there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. So, again, some some wonderful advice and wise words. Uh, at the end of our conversations, uh, we always leave it open uh, to our special guests. If there's anything that we weren't able to address, uh, whether it's social issues, uh, anything, that we leave the floor with you to let us know. Um, well, that's really open-ended. <laughs> um, I don't know if I have too much else to add to that. I mean, I, I love what everyone's doing here. And, and uh, I think, yeah, it's just to be, to, to find what you're passionate about and just go for it. I don't, I don't see any... Um, I don't see any other you know, piece of advice I could really give uh, outside of that. Well, listen, it's been a real pleasure to speak with you. We're all so happy that we had some of your time. And if we're so fortunate to maybe have a few minutes after we're done our conversation here and anybody who's on with us today has a few questions for you, uh, if we can get to those, that would be wonderful. Uh, but for those who are here and uh, those who will be listening afterwards, you can reach Matthew on the web at www.drmatthewmagra.com and on Instagram at Dr dot Matthew Nagra. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me.